Hey, y'all. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Oh, wow. So, hey, I, we didn't get on today at 2 o'clock today at 2.30 because we were truly, um, everybody was kind of in different places today. And um, and I was having an amazing time celebrating my pastor's first year anniversary at our church at Boat Rock Community Baptist Church. Um, but I wanted to hop on real quickly because I was sitting here in the car as I was decompressing before I go in the house. You know, I always have to decompress. I don't know about y'all but I have to decompress before I go in the house because uh, once I get on the inside, my 18 year old is in full effect and she wants to talk and I need to listen. Okay. Can I get an amen? But I just wanted to jump on here really quickly um, because there are some things that I've learned and I want to share with you guys. I don't know if I, if you know, if any of this kind of resonates in your mind, Hey there, I see you coming in. I don't know if any of this resonates in your mind, but I just wanted to kind of share some things being 52, kind of some things that I've learned. And I hope that it resonates in your mind or you share it with someone. Maybe it'll help them a little bit better today. So this 52 thing, I do want to say this, that 52 is not the new 32. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> it is not the new uh, 32. Okay. So I, I don't want to hear that anymore. Uh, 52 is the new 52. Okay. So for wherever you at, that's where you're at. It is the same 52 today. You still was 52 times 365 days a year. Yeah, you earned every bit of that. So lean into that thing, okay? If you're 40, it's the new 40. If you're 50, it's the new 50. So that's something that I've learned and I'm leaning into that. So every year um, is another year of grace and another another year of, of mercy. And I just thank God for those blessings. Um, and so I wanna share a few things with you guys because I wrote it down. I actually wrote it down this time. Minister Kaylee would really be happy right now. She, she's probably giving me a virtual high five. But I want to share this stuff with you. So I hope it resonates with you. Maybe you can put some comments in the chat. And I'm going to see if I can see them as you comment. But I wrote some of these down. So one of the things that I have learned, that red flags are red flags. So if you're dealing with that right now, red flags are just what they are. They are not yellow. They are not green. And I'm, I've learned that. Um, and it's one thing to learn it, but it's something else to really act into that thing. Okay. So when you, when there's a red flag in a relationship, a red flag, you know, on, on the job, a red flag with our children. Okay. Something pops up and it doesn't feel right. Look right. Mm, sometimes don't smell right. Listen, it ain't right. So something I've learned is to stop ignoring the red flags. Stop ignoring the signs because especially this is number one, by the way. I think I may have put six things, but I got a whole bunch. So those who hang in, you just hang in. I love you. But one thing I've learned is that when God shows you things and you have a great relationship with God and you see those things, listen, just move out the way. If it's a red flag, it's a sign, move, get out the way. Isn't that a song? <laughs> but anyway, so that's number one. Red flags are red flags. No, no, number one was, 52 is the new 52 or whatever age you are. That's the age. It's not the new 32 or the new whatever. It's the age you're in. Number two is do not ignore the red flags. That's something that I've learned. Do not ignore them. Okay. Don't say something told me. And then you go the other direction when something told you to go left and you going right. Okay. Um, that's what I've learned. I've made so many mistakes that I just could, if I could kick myself properly, I probably would, would have done. Uh, number two, um, you are not lonely if you are alone something that I've learned. You are not lonely if you are alone. Okay. So sometimes we as women, um, especially Christian women, you know, I have to put that out there because I'm one. Okay. You think just because you are alone that you're lonely. You are not. You're not. You, we don't speak those things. Okay. Proverbs 18, 21. I got to throw it at you right now. Throw the word at you on this one because I have to throw it at myself all the time is we got to speak life and speak blessings and, you know, speak confidence into our life. No matter how grim that situation might look, there's power in our tongue. So just because you are um, alone, my sister or my brother, it does not mean that you are a lonely person and you're just, Ugh. no, that's not what it means. You are what you say you are. You are what you think you are. Okay. And so I say, don't think those things and don't speak those things. So that's something I've learned. And it is a constant 
it is a constant struggle, right? It's not something that I got all figured out because every day, something I've learned is every day that I get up and I put these shoes on, okay? Um, I have got to make sure that they are a piece. I got to make sure that I'm fully armored every single day because every day the enemy is ready to kill, steal, and destroy. Somebody's going to mess with you on the job. Somebody's going to cut you off in traffic. Somebody's going to roll their eyes at you somewhere. Come on, somebody. So we have to be mindful that we are in control of our thought process. Hey, Sister Sabrina, we are in, we are in control of, we're in control. Okay. Okay. So don't speak loneliness. You know, and if you need someone to encourage you, I am your cheerleader. Because listen, I know the daily struggle. I get it. Listen, I tell people all the time when they say, how do you get all that energy? I say, honey, you don't want to walk in these shoes. If I told you about these shoes, you don't see the inside of this shoe. Oh, it's worn out. Okay. So just, just, just speak life, speak love. You know, don't let the enemy have, get joy. Don't let the enemy be doing flips and cartwheels on your, no, it don't work out like that. Okay. So a number four, I think I'm on four. Lies, 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 lies. What I've learned. People who lie, always lie. There's no gray lie. There's no little white lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. Okay. And you have to understand that. Don't try to fix it. Pray for them. Don't try to fix it. And that was me trying to fix the lies. A lie is a lie. And what is done in the dark will come to light. Be mindful of that. Stay focused on what your purpose is. Sister, I see your message. Wait a minute. Mm, let me stop right now. Pray for you. I, I see. I see. Father God. Um, we just thank you for being who you are, oh God. We glorify you right now, Father. We glorify you that you still reign in the midst of all of these, uh, all of this COVID that's going on, um, all of these different variants of COVID, all of this, all of these diseases and sicknesses. You still reign. So I call on you right now, Father God, in the sweet name of your son Jesus, to touch my sister Sabrina right now. I ask right now that you shower your your peace upon her you shower your love upon her and you shower your healing upon her jehovah rapha and that she has a speedy recovery oh god that her lungs begin to function properly expeditiously and that she's able to regain her appetite um she's able to get these symptoms they go away in the name of jesus they go away quickly and she is able to get back to the same if not better than what she was before COVID. In the sweet name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Sister, we are praying for you. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. I will continue to lift you up in prayer, okay? You keep hope alive, my sister. Hope does not disappoint, okay? All right. All right. So I got a couple of more for you. Put my glasses on. So I got a couple of more for you. Um, I, I just, I was talking about lies, wasn't I? So lies are lies are lies, okay? Don't try to fix it. That's what I've learned. Don't try to lean into it. Don't try to be the CSI agent of lies. Let that thing, listen, you got to stay focused on your purpose. You got to stay focused on why you were breathing, why God woke you up this morning. Do not, and that's what I learned because I'm telling you, I used to be the wounded bird syndrome, okay? I got to I gotta find out why they lied, y'all. I got to lift up the carpet and I got to look in the closet and uh-uh, no, nada. That's not your job. Your job, my job, is to stay focused on why we are, why we, why God wakes us up every morning. Okay. It's to make every little bit of difference. A small difference is a big difference. Okay. And every difference that you make in somebody's lives, including your own and including your family, is critically important. Okay. To your existence. Okay. To serving and all of that. So don't get caught up in those lies. Just carry on. Tell them the hashtag carry on. Carry on. Okay. All right, so that's something I've learned too. And I'll tell you whatever I, I've learned that um, know your limits for the givers out there in the audience. For my partners out there, I can't see everybody who's on right now. I see my sister Sabrina. High five to you. But I'm going to tell you for the givers out there, okay? Know your limits because takers don't have limits. They just take and take and take. You cannot fix them, but you can fix you. That's what I've learned. You have to fix yourself. You are in control. You listen, you can't control anybody else. You cannot. I don't care how hard you try. You cannot. And that is what I have learned. Know your limits as a giver. Okay. Because takers, they don't have any limits. 
They just don't. They just take, 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 take. And then you're trying to figure that thing out. And that's a wasted time. And then you look back and go, I wasted all that time trying to figure out all you can control and figure out is you. Focus on your relationship with God and focus on being a better you, a better you every day. Small differences matter. Okay, I got a couple of more for you. I don't know why I'm rushing through this because if y'all pop off and pop on, that's super cool too. I love all y'all, but this is super good stuff because I, I was shocking myself. I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. I was like, whoa, and I'm writing it down. And I got all these notes. I just sat here in the car and wrote them down as I was decompressing. So I got one more. I got several more for you. Menopause does end. This is for my sisters out there. It does end. Don't let nobody. <laughs> Menopause does end. It ends. Okay. There is an end to menopause. It's not forever. Okay. The, you know, you, you personal summers and your personal hells, whatever you call them. Okay. I don't like the personal hell thing, but I heard that too. Um, it does end. Okay. There's so much help out there for that. So that's something I've learned. It's not something that, you know, you're going to have going on forever, forever, ever. No, it does stop. Okay. So, all right, let me get back to, um, this is a really good one. This one was for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So here it is. Oh, my phone's ringing. Here it is. Stop trying to heal in the same environment that hurt you. Can I, let me say this again. Stop trying to heal in the same environment that hurt you. I learned that. I learned it. it listen, I got a whole bunch of bruises on that thing. Okay. Um, I got a whole bunch of black eyes, you know, seriously, because I would stay in the environment. Again, I told you, full disclosure, I had the wounded bird syndrome. I had to just stay in an environment, no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship, whether it's on the job, whether it's just in a, a conversation where you allow someone to hurt you. If you allowed it, you stay in there thinking you're going to heal. But no, sometimes you have to walk away. At the, it's okay to walk away at that moment and come back with rules of engagement to handle that. Hear me clearly. And it didn't take me getting a little certifications in, in coaching. It's, it's, it's Holy Spirit, okay? And experience where he kept saying, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to guide you. Why are you trying to guide yourself? I'm not your co-pilot. I'm your pilot. Listen to me, okay? So I, I just want to share that with you. I learned that the hard way and I pray that this helps someone. But you got to stop trying to heal in the same environment where you were hurt. Sometimes people don't have the capacity and don't even have the desire to help you heal. And sometimes they don't own up to how they played a role in your hurt. Hear me clearly. And so you have to take responsibility of that. Okay. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility. Right. So I had to learn that myself. Okay, real stuff, real stuff. So I just want to share that with you. I got to share this one with you too. Um, the grass is not greener on the other side. It's not always, let me put it that way. Not it's Sometimes it might be, but very, very seldom. The grass is not always greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Okay, sometimes that grass on the other side is being fertilized with something mm, for the gardeners in the house, okay, or for the landscapers in the house you know what i'm thinking okay but sometimes that grass is greener <clears throat> you know because it's being fertilized with something else okay um and you don't know till you get over there and see what it's fertilized with that could be anything a relationship a job uh anything it, you know it's not always greener over there so the grass is greener where you water it okay where you take care of it that's where the grass is greener okay so don't and I learned this again, the hard, hard, very hard way. Life, life will teach you some lessons if you're willing to learn and grow from them, right? But a lot of times you have to say, what role did I play in it? Everybody plays a role in everything, okay? You played a role in it. You're not exempt. We're not exempt. I wasn't exempt, okay? There was some role I played in that grass, being a little wizard, okay? All right? It's not always the other person's fault. So remember that. The grass is greener where you water it, okay, where you tend to it, okay, all right? So keep that in mind. And remember this, wherever you go, you're taking you with you. And so if you don't fix you, 
you just taking the problem to those other places you're going, okay? So you got to do a self-check. Self-check before you go over there and tend to somebody else's grass. Make sure that you have done a self-analysis, a self-check on yourself. Okay, I tell myself that all the time, Denise, oh, you know, especially when I'm talking to my kids, I'm like, you're so much like me sometimes I can't stand you. But then I think about, you know, when I say that, I'm like, whoa. So what are some things that you can be better at when you are when you're doing a self check, a self analysis? Okay, before you go to that new job, what habits will you revise? What what things will you do a tune up on or recalibration on to make you a better you? Okay, where you're you're making a difference in somebody else's life on that job, in that church, in that relationship. Okay, you know, it's always boggling to me how it's always the other person with the problem. It's never you. I'm not trying to make friends on that because I had to figure that out on myself. Okay, all right. But before you go to that other lawn, somebody else's, you know, territory, check you out first. Do a self-check. Okay, seriously, because you're you are going with you over to that other lawn. You can't run from yourself. Something to think about. Okay, I got another one. I got a couple more. Just a couple of more. A couple, a couple, a couple. What's the other one? What's the other one? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Old friends. I got to talk about this. Friends. I got I only have like two or three ace boon coons, okay? Um, two or three, give or take on the day. You know, I'm sure they <laughs> say the same thing about me. But let me just say this, is every time I talk to my friends, I'm talking about true friends, people that you know that you can be yourself around, people that you know that they've seen your inner, you know, your, <laughs> they've been with you, ride or die. You know, if you're not there and something pop off, they're going to take, they're going to have your back, you know, and, and, and I tell my friend and friends every time I talk to them that I love them. Every single time. So that's something that I've learned. I've lost some really close people in my life. And I think we take for granted. We take for granted. There's one driving by right now. She just called me and I'm on this. I'm on here. Um, but we take for granted, you know, life. We take for granted that we're going to see people the next day. We take that for granted. We just go on our mundane way and we go to work and we come home and we do the same things over and over and over again. I mean, I just want to just caution us, okay, that you got to tell them you love them. It's okay to tell somebody you love that you don't know. You might be the only person that's telling them that, that you love them. You might be the only person that tells them that. You know, and that's one thing we do really well at my church. And, you know, um, is we love on people. We tell them we love them. They need that. People need that. I need that. Tell me you love me. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen. And so I, I tell you, tell your friends that you love them. Tell your family members that you love them. Pick up the phone and call them. You know, don't, you know, and listen, it, this is the other thing that I've learned. So what? I didn't talk to you yesterday. When I talk to you tomorrow, okay, because today's a new day. When I talk to you tomorrow, it should be like I never missed a call from you. Don't, please don't get caught up in the garbage, okay? That's nothing but the trick of the enemy is to separate people. So just because I haven't spoken to you, just, let's just pick up the phone. Don't, don't, please. What I've learned is that it's, it takes so much energy out of individuals when you go, where you been? I ain't talked to you in two days. Oh, I wish you had called me yesterday. You got to get through all that emotion and all that before you can say, how are you doing? You know, um, what are you, what's, what are you doing for fun? How are you feeling? How's work? How's the family? You got to go through all that drama before you get to the real. Okay. No. So what I've learned is stop the drama. I shut it down real quick. So when somebody says to me, girl, I ain't talked to you in a week. I said, and how you doing? Just go straight into love. Go straight into the focus, into the, to the, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I've learned. That stuff right there, you are in control. Stop, stop as, 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 um, um, oh gosh, I can't believe it. She says, stop that shucking and jiving. Stop it. It's silly. Okay. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. Just, 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 you know, 
Nobody has time for that. Okay, so I think I got a cut one more. One more. Hold up. One more. No, I do not have one more. Or did I? Wait, yes, I did. Hold on. I typed it on my phone. Hold up. <laughs> so um there it is. Oh, this is the other thing I've learned. Gray hair is sexy, ladies. Okay. Don't let nobody tell you any different. This whole little halo part I got right here don't mean I'm an angel. Okay. Just be <laughs> right here in the front. It's all gray before I color it. And it stays gray after I color it. But let me just tell you, stop trying to hide your gray hair, girl. It's super cute. It's super who you are. Okay. You know, people we, we put in our minds and I was one of those. Let me wave, wave my hand. I'm that one. Okay. Who felt like I had to, when I wore dark <laughs> hair, which was many, many eons ago, I was trying to cover the gray. I was intentionally trying to cover the gray. Even when I wore a wig, I made sure them gray pieces were not poking out. But what I've learned is that's who I am. So if it if the gray hair pokes out, I ain't got to make my hair dark and put all that, um, what's that Grecian formula stuff I used to use before I put my wig on? Ain't nobody got time for that. It is super, 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 super cute, super sexy for the single folks in the house who want to be sexy and all that fun stuff. Um, this is the other thing. I had it right here. Hold up. Uh, 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 something else I learned and I listen this is some self reflection right here I don't need a whole lot of stuff especially in my age you don't need a whole lot of stuff get rid of some of that stuff you got too much stuff put that stuff in some bins give it away put it outside do they still have the um? what's those people that come pick up you know garage sale whatever you want to do but you don't need so many things you don't have to have so much stuff. I think about our family and friends um, in the in the in the in Louisiana right now, and other parts that are affected by these hurricanes and all these things, and they gotta pack up quick and get out because of this Category Five storm coming, this close to if not worse than Katrina, and they gotta pack up and go quick. You know what? Think about if that was to God forbid happen to anybody in Georgia. I'm just talking about Georgia. I'm in Georgia. Like, I mean, are we, do we have, are we minimalist? Or do we have a whole bunch of stuff? Because you can't take all them clothes and all them shoes and all them books. You can't take all that. Okay. So sometimes it's good to recycle some of that stuff. And that's what I've begun to do. And that's something that I've learned here recently. I don't need all this stuff. Bless somebody else with it. Make a difference in somebody else's life that would be like, oh, this is a really cool book. It's okay if it's a used book. You ain't always got to give them a new book in the sleeve. <laughs> you don't. They're going to love the thought that happens that you you actually read this book. You thumb through the pages. Okay. Sanitize your hands first. And yeah, and you give them that book or that clothing. You know, whatever it might be, recite. Listen, there's so many people Um that would love to be able to have some of the things that you have. And sometimes you just have too much stuff. You don't need all that stuff. I, I know I don't. So I had, you know, you, you steady of buying stuff and just piling on top of stuff. It's just silly, silly, silly. Um, last thing, the last thing, uh -oh, all these things coming through. I'm sorry. This is the last thing. All right. Uh, actually, there's two more. <laughs> it's okay to be thick. As long as you're healthy. Okay. So stop thinking what we see online. I learned that at 52. It's okay that I'm a voluptuous pescatarian. That is okay. That's who God made you. If you're thick, I, you know, I'm not going to go for the whole thing that is in my, what is it? It's in my, I'm big boned it. Yeah, I ain't going for all that. But what I will say is that make sure that you're eating healthy and just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm that little bitty part. I'm doing that little bit at a time. Okay. So I might be a pescatarian where I eat fish and vegetables, but guess what? I'm still eating a whole bunch of starches and a whole bunch of sugar that I should not be eating more than I should. And yes, I'm drinking a little bit more water. But listen, embrace your thickness as long as you know that you are exercising, you're eating better, you're really trying to have longevity of life, right? And as you're serving out for like people like me out making disciples, um, like, you know, like we do, it's you can't be doing it when you're crawling in to meet people. Come on, somebody. So yes, embrace your thickness and your frame. Embrace who you are. Make sure that you are eating right, 
it, doing little steps, okay? You're eating right. You're drinking lots of water. You're hydrating. Because listen, at my age, at this new 52, you cannot get dehydrated. Because let me tell y'all something. That is so unhealthy. Dehydration for our age is super not cool. And it's super unhealthy. So anyway, so the last thing I got, and I'm out of here because I've been on too long, okay, is naps. Do not feel bad about taking naps. I don't feel bad anymore. Now, seriously, I don't feel bad about taking naps anymore at all. You got to take naps, especially if you're over 45. Take a nap and don't feel bad about it. Now, a short nap, yes, okay, that doesn't mean during work hours, <laughs> if you are on the clock, but it means you got, and that doesn't mean at the wheel, because I'm a guilty of that. When I would get ready, I'd be so tired sometimes that I would take a nap at the wheel. That is super not cool, super dangerous. That's not okay. You need to pull over. It is okay to take a nap, folks. It's not just for babies. That's what I've learned. When I tell you how my mind is so much fresher and more recalibrated and I'm making the right decisions is because the new 52 got to take a nap okay that means wherever you at the new whatever age you're at okay maybe have to take a nap occasionally and it's okay don't let nobody make you feel bad about that okay so i gotta run um you know but i wanted to kind of share those couple of things that i had i actually have more but i'm gonna get out of here i gotta get out of my car i have decompressed enough i have enjoyed you guys and gals hope to see you soon Check out our website. Check out our YouTube live. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff on there. Um, check us out next Sunday. We'll be back on here next Sunday as well, probably around 2.30. Um, and you know, we got a lot going on. So everybody's kind of in different places, but we are still here. We love y'all. I love you. I pray that you have an amazing rest of your day. Sister Sabrina, if you are still on, my girl, I love you so much. Get well, get well. Pay attention to your body. Everybody pay attention to your body. Be careful out there. This COVID thing is, is, is it's out there, okay? It, just because everybody's out and about does not mean COVID is gone. That's not what it means, okay? And just because everybody getting vaccinated does not mean COVID, it is still real, okay? And so we still have to be careful. We still have to stay home when we're sick. We still have to wash our hands because, and even when we do that, we still could miss something. So be careful, be careful, be careful. Um, I'm trying to be careful. I've had it twice myself and I don't want that bad boy again. No, I, I, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, so I hear you, okay? Be careful and most importantly, stay prayed up. Stay prayed up, stay prayed up. Speak healing scriptures over your body. Lay hands on yourself. Come on somebody. You speak those healing scriptures, okay? And you just know that you know that you know that God still reigns through all of this stuff. That's, he's still on the throne. He still knows what's going on. He still can heal your body. He still can take care of you and your family. He's still going to pay your bills. Hey, he's saying, just call on me. Because I told you I would never leave you or forsake you, okay? But you calling on everybody else. He said, call me. Call me. If you need someone to talk to, uh, he said, call me satisfaction guarantee. Okay. That's what my God said. So y'all have a great day. I love you guys and gals, sisters and my brothers. I am about to go in and chill for a moment because I had such an amazing time today celebrating senior pastor Rico Miller's um, first year anniversary with all my Boat Rock Community Baptist Church family and my Mount Welcome family was there too. It was super cool. And uh, and so, I, listen, I'm still on this high, so I had to decompress. So now I can actually go in the house. I'm going to go home, go inside the house right there. And when I get in, I'm going to make sure that I'm ready for my 18-year-old because we already know she puts the sister on lockdown. She wants to talk. She wants me to listen and listen. And she wants me to speak when spoken to. And our young people, we got to be there for them. Okay? Okay? All right. Love y'all. See you later. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. Sarinara. Goodbye. Peace. <laughs>